Okay, welcome back everyone for the third session of the day. We're around about halfway through, so hope you're enjoying everything so far. Uh, we have Sashi with us today, and he is going to be walking through the Android SDK and how to develop an application using that. So without further ado, over to you, Sashi. The stage is yours. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Uh, thank you. Um, good morning, all. Good afternoon and uh, good evening. So first of all, welcome to the session. Um, what did we... All right, so uh, probably so this sessions, uh, we will uh, introduce ourselves, you know, about the Zebra handheld RFID readers and the tools and SDK that support our uh, Zebra handheld uh, RFID uh, readers. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so the uh, as I said, uh, so this is how we would uh, we would run through. So we'll try to understand the uh, existing um, the uh, uh, Zebra RFID handheld uh, readers uh, product portfolio. So we'll cover 8500, uh, and then we'll go to MC33 and the and and the latest uh, handheld reader RFD40. So we'll try to understand the uh, user feedback and the uh, indications that are available with these handheld readers, the uh, the RFID firmware, and then we'll then understand the tools support that's there around in order to manage and um, you know drive those handheld uh, readers. So we also have a demo applications probably uh, at the end. Uh, we can have a quick demo on all the functionalities offered by our demo applications. And then let's understand the um, the SDK support that we have across platforms. And I'm sorry, what are the uh, features? And I mean, how do we, you know, uh, basically uh, develop uh, application or a user use case using this SDKs? So we'll have a sample uh, sample app and code snippets we'll understand that so and also with respect to sdk we'll understand how sdk is uh, architected and then you know the basic operations that you can perform or you can you can develop uh, over the uh, sdk so the similar offerings is there across android ios uh, windows and then we will uh, point you on the uh, support web pages so there are a lot of tutorials and additional information and you know, white papers and articles things like that that are available so probably we can i'll just point point out those uh, links and the materials that are available okay um so to begin with um so and held readers portfolio we have uh, MC33. So there is this RFD 8500 and again RFD 40 and RFD uh, 90. This is the uh, uh, new generation new generation handheld uh, RFID readers. So if you really, um, I mean, as it's you see the uh, features, probably the how it has evolved. So if you really look at it, so the MX, MC3300 XR is an integrated uh, handheld reader so we have both the uh, the terminal or the ui and the rfid module it's an integrated piece so it's based on qualcomm sdm 660 uh, chipsets so it has an integrated scanner within that it supports you know the zeti protocol and currently it runs on android q and android r those are the offerings for this mc33 and the software tools that is uh, tools that exist to support this MC33. We have RFID Manager. Um, then we have 3 RFID Mobile. This is what uh, we're talking about the uh, demo applications. So we will quickly uh, uh, see later, you know, what this, what we can exactly uh, uh, demo or uh, look at the features using this 3 RFID Mobile. Then the RFID web support. And along with that, so we have the Android SDK and the Xamarin SDK support for users to develop their uh, you know, use cases over 
Android and Windows platform. Yeah, so as I said, um, uh, development platform is Android and Windows. So with RFD 8500, it's mainly, it's, it's not an integrated handheld readers. So it supports the, uh, you know, terminals and you can connect the terminals through uh, Bluetooth and offers. So there are two SKUs. So one, uh, you know, wherein it offers the RFID interface and there is another SKU which offers both RFID uh, ZTE protocol and the barcode uh, SSI uh, protocol. So it's mainly uh, the communication interface is mainly through uh, Bluetooth and the Bluetooth head mode. So again, so there is a software, software tool support as you see. Again, we have RFID manager, RFID, uh, one to three RFID mobile to uh, demo all the uh, features, the scan control applications for configurations. See, um, I mean, the scan control app for uh, the uh, scanner. So uh, in order to uh, demo the scanner uh, features, then one to three scan. So we have Android RFID scan, the SDK support available for uh, iOS, uh, Windows, and there is an Xamarin SDK for, uh, you know, Windows development platform. As I said, uh, again, the window development platform that is supported for 8500. So it's like Android, Windows, and iOS. Um, and, and then the, the latest and the current and held readers is like we have RFD 40 and RFD 90 um, supporting the same Android, iOS, and Windows platform. So uh, and it has, the SLED has both integrated uh, RFID uh, model and the barcode uh, scanner on it. So there are three SKUs of, uh, offered here. So with scanners and without scanners. So basically you can, you, you can, if you really look at it, so the terminal connectivity, you, we have, uh, you know, uh, Bluetooth and there is this additional USB and Wi-Fi as well with RFD 40. And, uh, you know, it's like you have this LED and uh, beep UI interface on the uh, reader. So the software tool support, we have one to three RFID mobile, both for iOS and Android. So we have one to three RFID uh, desktop and we again offer uh, the SDK in Android, Windows and the uh, Xamarin support is there for RFD 40 and RFD 90. So the, again, the development platform for uh, users would be Android, Windows and iOS. Right. Um, so we will just uh, go through basic um, uh, architecture here uh, for each of this, um, I know, handheld readers. To begin with, we'll have uh, Gen X, that is RFD 8500. Uh, just a okay. uh, Sorry about that. Okay. So as I said, uh, the on the uh, for 8500, the terminals you know connect through a Bluetooth uh, stack, so you can basically develop all the applications and communicate with your 8500 through the uh, Bluetooth stack. So it offers the SPP port and the head uh, interfaces for your applications, and you also have a uh, so one to three scan can basically connect through the uh, USB software stack and you can basically manage this 8500 uh, devices. And as you see here on the top half, so you have user interface on this 8500 or like, you know, have LED support, you have a beeper support and there is a, a single trigger and a button basically to you know, uh, switch between the RFID mode and the scanner mode. So, so uh, this is 8500. So we will just see. Okay, so with 8500 BT stack specification, we'll take a quick look at the BT stack specification. So what the support is uh, BT V2.1. Um, so as I said earlier, uh, you know, uh, so it has the SPP serial port profile. It supports SPP profile. So 
through which your SDK connects and communicates. And then it also has a keyboard human interface, uh, 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 hit profile, so that you know you can you can change your eighty five hundred basically to as a hit uh, device, and then it 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 supports both Android and the iOS. So uh, it also has the uh, Mifi support to support the iOS as an iOS accessories. So the BT stack is version 2.1, you know, with 2.1 uh, Mbits per second uh, data rate, right? So, um, okay, as I covered earlier, uh, mentioned earlier, we have SPP and uh, MIFI combo mode default, and then you can you can change the mode for uh, hit mode uh, to basically act as a uh, as a keyboard peripheral and then in combo mode both SPP and MIFI sub modes are advertised uh, during the connections Just okay, let's be Okay, and this is important so both SPP and MIFI sub modes, uh, you know, we cannot cannot be used at the same uh, uh, same time Okay, now this is a general software architecture for uh, MC33. It's a little bit, um, you know, um, uh, uh, change here in the sense the uh, host communicates with the RFID module through a high-speed serial interface. Okay, so there is a, a RFID system service which bridges the uh, SDK in, from the user space to the RFID module uh, below, okay? Now again, um, so this is, as I said earlier, it's an integrated RFID reader, you know, supporting Android 11 and Android uh, 12. So on top of this SDK, so you have with like user applications, RFID managers, or you know, the other demo applications. And so they all uh, would be on, using the uh, same SDK that is offered. So evolving through this handheld readers, the um, the current generation uh, handheld readers, we have RFD 40 and 90. So wherein, you know, we have uh, various mode of communications that is being offered. Uh, it, it's like BTT, then there is a USB communications, uh, so you can communicate to the uh, uh, RFI NG sled uh, through BT or through uh, USB. And SDK also has, uh, has evolved to give a combined interface to drive both RFID module and the uh, scanner module. So uh, basically you can have uh, an applications and um, you know using the, you can have an integrated applications, you can develop the use case you know, uh, using both RFID and the uh, and and the uh, scanner using the same uh, SDK. And right. Uh, okay, as you see here, um, so there are um, an additional features. Uh, that has been uh, offered, you know, in the SDK for RFD 1490. So we have like multi-tag locate. So uh, there is a new firmware update feature that is supported uh, for RFD uh, 1490. And similarly, there are additional reporting APIs and, um, uh, and, and as I said, the simultaneous mode of RFID and scanner uh, uh, functioning. And if you really look at it, the various SKUs that are offered for this RF40, RF, RFID, uh, RFD 40 and 90. So there are three SKUs. We have premium plus, premium and uh, standard. So they, they vary with respect to you know, what communication stack they, they provide, whether the, uh, the barcode engine and, with, and with, with respect to RFID antenna as well. So if you really look at it, so premium plus is the one which offers I know Wi-Fi 6 plus uh, Bluetooth and the uh, barcode engine. So we have this premium 
wherein um, it's without the barcode engine, however, supporting both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And there is this standard where we only support the USB connectivity uh, without Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, or the barcode engine. So we have three standard uh, SKUs, uh, basically three SKUs, so standard, premium, and premium plus. So this is these are the differentiations between these uh, models. Okay, so then um, as, as you see in the uh, earlier uh, handheld readers, so it offered only uh, one key. So the key has to work either for, it will be either be in the RFID mode or in the uh, scan mode. Um, so even with RFID 40, uh, since the handheld uh, reader offers two key, two, there are two trigger keys, two hard trigger keys. So you have the flexibility to map your uh, keys for various functionalities or features. So you have, uh, so each of this key can be, you know, mapped for RFID scan, or you know, the, the other key could be uh, mapped for, you know, scan that is available on the uh, sled. And then there can be, uh, we can just map it just to get a scan notification so that the the user applications or applications can basically consume the scan notification and drive the scanner. And then we have a terminal scan. So a terminal scan is in a scenario where you, you have a standard RFID uh, device and you have an EMC terminal connected to a RFD 40. And then, you know, you want, you use the hard trigger to drive the scanner, which is there on the terminal connected through the adapter on the sled device. So there are various combinations that you can map your keys for uh, according to your use cases. Right. Um, so in general, um, all these handheld uh, readers provide a similar user interface. So we have these beeps to give the, the operation uh, results. So if there is a tag read and write, you will see a, you know, a 20 millisecond uh, uh, interval uh, beeps in order to indicate the operation mode. Similarly, um, it will be complemented with the complemented with LED indications as well. So there are various LED indications to denote, you know, to basically indicate tag read and writes. Um, you know, when there is a firmware update in progress, to indicate that you know, uh, is in the firmware is in the recovery mode, and also to indicate various uh, battery level, uh, the you know uh, at, uh, in the uh, RFID readers. So if it is 15, you know, it is greater than 15 percent, uh, whether it is low or critical, or you know, if it is less than 5 percent, the uh, reader is going to uh, shut down. So all these things are indicated by LEDs, and of course the firmware updates are only allowed with minimum battery charge of uh, 15%. Okay, so we basically um, had a preview on the various handheld readers, their uh, differentiations with respect to architectures and with respect to, you know, the communications mode that they offer. So now, now, now let's get into what are the tools and the SDKs that are provided or offered in order to uh, support these handheld uh, readers. So the applications are there across platform, like there are Windows, they are supported in, on Android, and they are supported in iOS as well. Now, the from the SDK perspective, um, now if you really look at the Windows application tools, so RFID Windows demo applications is there. Um, Okay, and then we have the scanner windows uh, demo applications, and then we have the one, two, three scan for configurations, which, which supports uh, 8500. So Android applications, we have uh, one, two, three RFID mobile, which supports MC33, 8500, and RFD40 and 90. So it's a common Android application supporting uh, all these uh, devices. So in addition to this, uh, there, there was there is this explicit RFID manager where we can do some basic management with respect to uh, 
you know regulatory configurations of firmware updated which is restricted only for uh, mc33 and then uh, we have rfid wedge which is supported in mc33 and above basically uh, so this rfid wedge uh, is supported both for rfd40 90 and mc33 um, similarly there is an explicit rw demo application to showcase our rfid wedge functionality and uh, as i said mc33 is an integrated uh, applications so it also supports so you, you can basically manage your mc33 to stage now as well so the stage now is restricted only for mc33 as it's a as it's an integrated uh, reader so the stage now support is not there for other devices um then the emm support using the stage now that can be done only using mc33 um, and then uh, Xamarin uh, demo app. So it also supports the Xamarin, which is in generally, which is in generic for, uh, you know, the MC33 RFD40 and 8500. Similarly, we have a similar offering for uh, in the iOS platform as well. Right. So as I said. Um, uh, so this RFID manager. So we'll quickly look at what this RFID manager offers. As I said, it's only applicable for uh, MC33. Uh, so it, it offers uh, to do some regulatory settings. You can quickly check the battery uh, status here, and with respect to uh, settings, you know you can you can basically uh, do a factory reset and reset reader. Right, so so here you can basically then the RFID manager also supports firmware update and this and as I said again, so this firmware update is it, it's only for MC33. So this RFID manager management application is only for uh, MC33. And then uh, you can basically enable some logs and also you can get the no reader information so the quick reader information with respect to the application version the service the system service version that it is that is running and the uh, you know the rfid module uh, firmware version both the radio version and the uh, stm version right um so as i said um with in, in MC33, since it's an integrated uh, RFID uh, uh, reader, so there to some extent you can basically manage your um, RFID uh, module three through the stage now, or it, there can be an EMM agents. Both of them uh, can manage your RFID uh, uh, reader through an MX interface. It's um, and you know underneath. So there is an RFID CSP plugin support, uh, which basically uh, helps manage your RFID reader and and stage RFID reader. And this is only offered or supported uh, in MC33. Okay. Um, and RFID EMM configuration. So as I said, um, this is the list of the configurations uh, that can be um, that can be done. Um, so you can basically do a firmware update using those uh, EMM agents or state now. The, you can basically configure country of operations, you know, the uh, channel masking, and you know, uh, transmit power level, antenna transmit power level. You can, you can basically set your you know uh, query uh, select parameters and uh, you can even you know perform the reset radio and factory default uh, operations using these uh, stage now or through a management agent so these are some uh, minimum or the, uh, the basic uh, configurations management that you can do on mc33 so as i said um, so MC33 also supports uh, RFID wedge, and it is extended. It, it, the the data wedge support is already there for is is there for MC33, RFD40, and RFD90. 
so basically you can create your database profile to enable RFID read capabilities and then you know uh, route those uh, RFID data directly to the to your applications uh, as an intent you know, or as a keyboard uh, in uh, data or it can even be routed uh, over uh, IP uh, interface so this, uh, so this data which profile in the latest data which uh, profile even offers to select the uh, readers, multiple readers that are available. So they are supported in MC33 and uh, even for USB, RFID, RFD40 and 90 for over USB and for Bluetooth uh, communication. So with MC33, uh, so there is a, a built-in, you know, RFID RW demo applications. So uh, this is basically uh, to demo the RFID profile uh, in the data which. So with a demo application, you can really, um, you know, get the basic RFID reads and there are some configurations that are available while you create the profile with respect to um, you know the read configurations and the the reader that you would like to uh, select so uh, now we'll come to 123 RFID mobile as i said this is the demo application this is an integrated mobile application um, which which supports 8500 mc33 and rft 40 and uh, 90 so using this uh, demo applications, so you should be able to do, you know, rapid read, inventory, you know, all the access operations, so some tag locating operations. So there is this multi-tag locate operations. You also should be able to perform RFID reader settings. Um, and there are some, you know, predefined uh, profile settings uh, that are available using which you should be able to, uh, you know, uh, set the readers and also there is a firmware update uh, support which is restricted for RFD 40 and 90 with res so if we, but so this firmware update support is offered um, even with the RFID manager that is in on MC 33 but with respect to RFD 40 and 90 you can use one to three RFID demo applications um, So when you the one three RFID mobile applications also supports uh, scanner settings. So as I said earlier, so RFD forty supports three uh, SKUs, right? So there is so for a premium plus device where uh, we have a scanner. So using one three RFID demo application, we should be able to do some scanner uh, settings as well. Yeah, as I uh, covered earlier, so there are some. Uh, so these are some of the uh, as I said so so there are uh, profiles like the fastest read cycle count uh, dense readers profiles and for optimal battery balance performance and user defined profiles in order to suit the use cases that you are looking for uh, and you see tag list match mode easy to use and to, so you can basically uh, add pre filters to be able to add delete uh, pre filters then uh, as I said sample access operations like read write and kill so there are these reader status indications uh, and then singulation controls so there is an online demo which I have attached which we can uh, check later so as I said so uh, firmware update is the latest uh, addition for 123 RFID mobile which supports uh, RFD 40 and 90 Uh, this is the demo. We'll come back to this. Uh, okay, so as I said, um, so we have demo applications across the uh, platform. So we have it for Android. We have it for um, uh, the, the Xamarin demo app is supported. Uh, is uh, basic. This is a very basic uh, Xamarin demo app uh, to over the um, which can be used 
or which can basically you can develop uh, over the Windows uh, platform. Uh, it only supports, you know, inventory, item locate, reader list, and access operations. So those were the tools that I discussed. I briefed on the tools that are uh, supported for these handheld readers. Uh, now let us look at this SDK support that is offered for a handheld uh, reader. As I said, the SDK is supported for Android, iOS, and Windows uh, platform. You know, supporting 8500, MC33, and RFD40 slash 90. And then the Xamarin wrappers or the Xamarin uh, binding are also available for Windows development uh, environment. Right? Now the existing uh, Windows SDK or the Android uh, SDK. So as I said, it's an integrated SDK offering uh, supporting both uh, RFID APIs and the scanner API APIs. So uh, should be able to develop the applications uh, you know to drive both RFID and uh, scan. So, so as I said, similarly we have both uh, you know Android binding and the iOS binding uh, for the Windows development environment. So these are the various SDK offerings for the handheld uh, readers. Um, Yeah, so these are some of the uh, SDKs, you know, the development environment that is uh, captured here. So the SDKs are actually distributed, you know, as an AAR file. So user needs to statically link this AAR file into his into his applications, and then should be, uh, and then you can use the uh, APIs. That's effort. So that's the mode how the SDK library gets integrated in the user application. So if you uh, briefly look at this Android SDK architecture, the approach would be to, you know, so as we saw, the so various handheld readers offers different communication uh, modes. So you need to initialize the transport type and you know uh, get the reader handle so using that so based on the transport type that you have selected you should be able to enumerate all the rfid devices that are available on those uh, transport type so you can then choose the corresponding rfid device and then connect to that particular reader so once you connect you should be able to configure and perform rfid operations on that so uh, so as you are performing the operations so you there are callback functions to handle the uh, status and the data events. Uh, so once you do this, you would then disconnect the uh, data. So this is the general uh, the uh, approach. So um, so if you really look at on the right side, um, so you have the RFID device interface or the uh, reader interface for the uh, user using which he can configure and perform the actions. And at the same time, you have the RFID data and event uh, callback. Uh, it's the, it, the asynchronous um, you know, status and the event callback for the uh, applications to handle. So this is the general um, architecture or the, the, uh, or the way it will link and uh, the, the steps that the user have to do in order to use this uh, SDK. So we have this uh, tech doc web pages. Um, if you go to, you know, Zebra tech docs and our uh, RFID SDK for Android, you know, you should be able to get, uh, there is a basic sample app which can be a building block in order to add all the additional operations that uh, you require. And then there are various uh, tutorials that are available uh, there. So we will just, uh, you know, go through this sample code snippet, like, you know, on the steps that, you know, I mentioned earlier in order to uh, use the SDK. So as I said, the first thing you would do is initialize the uh, reader with the uh, transport 
that you are looking for so probably if you want if you are initializing a reader for 8500 so here it would be a uh, transport dot bluetooth but if you want to enumerate all the devices in your applications then your transport dot all would basically look for devices that are available over bluetooth that are available on usb and that are available on the uh, serial connectivity or the high speed serial interface which is which would be the case for mc33 right so once you do that um, so you have this get available rf id reader list it, the reader list will give you all the readers that are uh, that that it has enumerated or basically discovered or identified and 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 to the readers you would then attach your uh, notifications right so so the reader availability and non availability uh, events in order to get those events you would basically attach a callback here so this is this readers attached and also for the other uh, asynchronous handler so basically the third step would be to attach your you know, uh, handlers to get the status in the data events so you would then basically connect the reader um, with a simple call the rfid reader uh, dot connect uh, once you do a connect um, probably you would do various actions like you know inventory or access operations so when you do those uh, operations so you get so there is uh, we would have attached these are the two callback handlers i was talking about the first one the first one here they these are the um, uh, the data event handlers so where you get the inventory uh, data and uh, or the the uh, metadata with specific to inventory and the access data so as you do the inventory operations and the access operations and then there is this event uh, status notifications so where we keep getting the various um, you know the uh, status updates like the connect events or the disconnect events and the trigger events uh, or the battery uh, events if you are so you can basically you can subscribe for various uh, events from the reader all the events that you have subscribed would uh, you know would be uh, would be posted for this given status notifications all right so then uh, so once we are done with this you can end this with uh, readers dot uh, disconnect and then readers dot dispose so uh, readers dot dispose would basically uh, you know uh, uh, disconnect your you know the communication channels and also you know disposes of all the uh, resources that has been you know created uh, during our sdk or during our operations during sdk initializations so uh, the the similar thing so whatever we uh, we saw now was we we went through these android sdk so the similar things is offered you know with respect to the ios sdk um, so the features uh, match more or less same what is offered in android on ios as well and we also have a windows sdk support for users to drive you know rfd uh, 40. Um, as i said so there are uh, xamarin binding to the same sdk that i had discussed so using the uh, xamarin binding user should be able to develop applications you know for uh, on the windows environment for both ios and android Right. Again, uh, some more uh, support web pages. I have directly put some of the links here. Um, you know, there is a support pages for 8500, MC33, and also you can go to um, uh, RFD40 and RFD90. So, from the documentation perspective, um, you should be able to refer um, so i have a demo here probably i will start a, a demo here um just if i can jump in there sashi uh, we're actually yeah. about seven minutes or so <clears throat> excuse me over time at the moment and the next session will start in about three minutes so if the demo is oh, very okay. quick then let's go ahead otherwise we may want to uh to forego that 
Okay, yeah, I think demo takes around like 10 to 15 minutes. So uh, I think, yeah, then probably uh, we can we can give share the link or thing so that they can. Okay, yeah, we'll work with you uh, on that offline. We'll try and get like a recording yeah. of that demo and then we can we can send it to yeah. the attendees. Okay, thank you very All much right. for yeah. your uh, presentation, Sashi. Much appreciated. Um, given that we've overrun here uh, a fair bit and we need to jump to the next session, uh, unfortunately, we won't have time to answer uh, your questions. What we will do is we'll take the questions that you've asked, uh, we'll pass these over to the RFID team and we'll put together a sort of a Q&A blog where we'll uh, go through all the questions that everyone's asked and provide some answers and we'll put that in a blog format and we'll share that link uh, with all the yeah, members. Sure. sure, sure, yeah. Sounds good. Okay, so uh, I'm going to end this session now and move over to the IoT Connector session. So I think this is poised to be a, a really interesting session as they all have been so far today. Uh, so please make your way back to the events overview page and click on join session for the IoT Connector session and we'll see you there in just a moment. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Thank you everybody. Thanks. <laughs>